And welcome to the first ever podcast of the first ever show of The Lock-In. Episode one, wasn't it? It was, wasn't yeah. It just? <laughs> it was. I'm Tom Dransfield. I'm Ryan McCann. And welcome to the podcast. You're in for an excellent hour. Uh, it is an unbelievable hour. It's the best hour, uh, well, not only of your life, but of the three and a half hour show we did originally. So what we've done is we've like sat through it, sifted through it, and rated the jokes. Like, So you've just got an hour of pure gold. That's that's so the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the show airs at Thursday on at midnight on Bellrig FM, which you can find online. And if you want an excellent time, then listen to the live show. Yeah. And you're really going to enjoy this podcast. Yeah, this is going to give you a flavour for it. This is like a starter, if you will. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, absolutely. I just, I just want you to go ahead and enjoy it. All right, let's kick off the show. The Lock-In. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Lock-In, um, which will feature myself, Ryan McCann. And myself, Tom Dransford. Uh, any other business? Uh, no, I think we should crack on. All right, let's crack on then. Um, I know I've got some big issues to discuss. What about you? I, <laughs> I've i been very busy today. Oh, yeah? Yep. Busy. Busy? You want to know what I did before I came on air, actually? I desperately uh, do. Something that I've not done for quite a while, actually. Um, today I was doing... Brush your teeth? <laughs> I didn't brush my teeth, no. no. I, um, I did some jigsaw. Oh, wow. For really? real, yeah. Wow. Seriously, it's a it's a thousand piece jigsaw. That's enthralling. Um, well, I'm enjoy- I was enjoying it. What was it of? Um, just <laughs> of Disney. <laughs> just of Disney. All right, just of Disney. Like Disney. Yeah, like um, Disneyland or like. No, no, like lots of different Disney characters. All right, nice. Like a big picture. Yeah. Like, like say like eight different pictures pushed into one mega picture. Like that mega picture you drew. You oh yeah, I drew yeah. that mega picture. Tell them about that. Um, well, they hung it in the National Art Gallery. Yeah. I just wrote mega picture, and um, then I drew a picture of Optimus Prime from Transformers riding a yeah. lion, and they agreed that it was definitely a mega picture. <laughs> it's excellent. Yeah. Um, who who agreed that? Uh, that would be Carl Sagan, the <laughs> um, famous, you know, astrologist. Not astrologist. He's a poet. No, he isn't. Carl Sagan's a poet. <laughs> He's a poet and he didn't even know it. No, he did. He knew it very well. Oh, right. That's why he became That's famous. Good. Yeah, he made all his money doing that. <laughs> um, you wouldn't be a very good poet if you didn't even know it, would you? No, that's true. Um, you're just walking around oblivious to the fact that people are reading your work and discussing it. You'd never contact any publishers or anything like no. that. And, you know, you'd be like, people are looking into your work going, oh, maybe he's talking about communism. Oh, maybe he's talking about feminism. And you, you don't even know. Yeah. You're not even talking about anything. You'd go to, like, concerned. write down a phone number for a girl or something, give it to her, it's accidentally a poem. <laughs> she had no idea. You're a poet and yeah. you didn't, and even, you didn't know even know it. Know it. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the thing. The only thing is she's got no way of contacting you, of course. Yeah. Because she's, all, you know, she looked you up in an anthology. You're not there. Speaking of uh, contacting us, we've had our very first email. The very first email of our very first show. What this a lucky This is a monumental man. occasion. This is from Dan Witten, I believe, uh, from this Lancaster University. And Dan he said, Witten. big mistake giving me this email, and I don't doubt it at all. <laughs> Not much of a message, um, but then again, you can't spell Witten without wit. So, uh, well done, Dan. <laughs> that's very true. Well done, Dan. Uh, someone else messaged in, uh, Duncan Patman. Uh, that's from my hometown, I believe. He said, we really like your jumper. It's a keeper. It is a keeper. It is a keeper, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Have you ever played Dungeon Keeper? No, I haven't played Dungeon, Dungeon Keeper. Dungeon Keeper 2 is an excellent game. I've played Finders Keepers. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, we'll talk about I, that. I play it at my mate's houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you even got any mates? <laughs> no. Do they even have houses? They don't know that I'm there. No. <laughs> Have you ever been to Duncan Patman's house? I have, yeah. If uh, if anybody else has ever been to Duncan Patman's house and has any stories about that, they'd like to send in, talk to us about that. Um, we'd yep. love to discuss that. That's very true. And unless you are Duncan Patman, because if it's a story about your own house, that's not as exciting. <laughs> yeah, like if you once, like, I don't know, like, had a biscuit, Duncan, <laughs> yeah. that's not that interesting, to very be honest true. with you. The lock-in. Um... How long do you guys think it is acceptable to leave it before changing your bed? We never actually um, decided, Tom. How long has it been since you changed your bed? Uh, my bed, I sleep on cold concrete, so I don't need to change it very much. Um, no? no, I sleep naked on <laughs> cold concrete <laughs> Where, in, in the rain to Whereabouts is that? build up my resistance. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> you know, by the side of lakes and, <laughs> and <laughs> concrete by the side of these and, lakes. Yeah, yeah, and quarries and you know. Oh, like res- man-made like pits. reservoirs and things. Yeah, there might be some concrete there, or like on the side of like the Hoover Dam. Yeah, like, there must be a lake on one side of that. Yeah, or um, inside the stomach of a deer. <laughs> I did that once. That was good. No, I I I, I remember that actually. Mm, yeah. yeah, that was um, that was good. That's so, a good you know, New Year's. Mm? That was a good New Year's. That was, yeah. yeah. Um, that was my favourite New Year's ever. <laughs> uh, the Millennium was brought in with style and grace on that occasion. Um, there's a couple of things that we want to do here tonight. We want to play a few games, don't we, Tom? That's very true. Uh, do you want? Well, I'll games. ask him. So, Tom, do you want to play some games? I would love to play some games. Tom's up for it, um, and I am too. So um, basically, Great. the first game we're going to play it's pretty uh, pretty basic. Um, is that you guys are going to send in the topic of a joke? Any topic, as long as uh, keep it clean, obviously. Um, and we will make up a joke right here, right now, for you guys listening in. Don't expect the joke to be good. Do expect the joke to be quick. Yeah, expect it to be quick and bad. Quick and bad. Yeah, very true. Yeah, like it's going to be good though. I mean, yeah. in a bad way. I could give you an example. <laughs> like if I just said to Ryan, "Okay, Ryan, talk about cats. Anything you want about cats when you're ready to go." And you have to make up a joke on the subject of cats. I've just thrown out there. Um, okay, why do cats make such good DJs? Because they can scratch real good. You see, see that? That was just spontaneous. That's just what you get. I didn't write that. That was not planned. We believe it or not. They're not planned. Yeah, I, this is something I promise all of you listening in at home. We do not plan a thing. So if you guys keep sending in a few topics of jokes, um, in fact, I'll do. I'll just do another example right now. I'm going to give Tom the topic of a joke. Um, yeah, um, that we've been sent in. We've actually. been sent in a joke from Jack Marshall from Lancaster. He says, "People called Peter." So, Tom, I'd really like you to tell me your best joke right. about Peter. Um, have you got one queued yes, up? Yes, I've got go one that? queued up. I think. I All think, right, okay. fire away, friend. I'm gonna start. Fire away, sir. I don't really know the um, punchline of this joke already, but uh, which Peter was it that started selling a series of cooking oils? I don't know. It was Peter Pan. <laughs> oh. So nap. See? Peter Pan there. Fast jokes. Uh, fast jokes. They'll be fast, but they won't necessarily be good. Ah, <sighs> the lock-in. No. Um, a few other things that I want to talk about. Um, <clears throat> very few of you listening in at the moment will have been in Tom's bedroom at university. Now, obviously, he d- he doesn't know. We met up yesterday to talk about, like, you know, to get some topic ideas, what we might want to talk about. Although, don't uh, say that few people have been in my bedroom. No one's been in your bedroom. Your many, bedroom... many people of various genders have been in my bedroom. Well, that may or may not be the case, <laughs> but I would like to discuss... <clears throat> Uh, I think Tom's curtains are awful. They are yellow with specks of orange on. Uh, Tom, how do you answer these allegations? You've never mentioned this to me before. No, I know, I saved like it for tonight. Wow. Well, so you thought sort you of just spring on me that my curtains are awful? Yeah, I just want to know what you well, think Well, I didn't curtains. design the curtains. No, nor right? did you buy them. No, that's true. Um, I guess I could, like, thwart the curtains by keeping them... Uh, yeah, you know, I could just keep them open all the time, and then I'd have the lovely view, wouldn't I? You might as well just take them down if you're going to keep them open what all else, the time. What else is yellow specked with brown? Yeah, they're specked with brown. No, they, they look like someone's got a rolling thing, like a rolling uh, brush, you know, like for painting, decorating, uh, put orange paint on it, left it in the sun for about 45 minutes, <laughs> and then attacked your curtains with them. And it's sort of like specky and flaky. It looks awful. It looks awful. It looks like a child did it, drunk. It's a disgrace. <laughs> My child did it actually drunk. Your child did it yeah. drunk. Yeah, well, that, that doesn't surprise me. Um, we have those. See, um, John, look what you've done. You've created a monster <laughs> who's created a monster <laughs> who goes around and draws on curtains with paint. Uh, I'm I'm disappointed, you know. That's I expected true. better. Um, I really shouldn't be having a go at your dad. I've never met him. No, I, I would true. really like to meet him one day. I'm sure he's great. He is great. You will meet him one day, I'm sure. Yeah. Many people will meet my dad. If anyone wants to meet my dad, please <laughs> <laughs> message him to the show. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, something I want to want to talk to you guys about. I've um, I've got a friend, um, and we had this discussion the other day about you know when you sleep over at someone's house, okay? Um, this idea that like when you go and stay at somebody's house, um, you take an overnight bag, obviously, um, separate from a sleeping bag, something to contain toiletries uh, and 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 whatnot. Um, and I said to him, this was my argument. I said, yeah, uh, overnight bag, really important. At the very least, 
you've got to carry a toothbrush. And he says, well, I think the maximum you need to take anywhere if you're only staying overnight is a toothbrush. And obviously this sparked a little bit of debate. I was kind of like, well, I don't know, like, you might want a bit of spray deodorant. But then his response to that, pretty sharp, he said, borrow some of theirs. I thought that's a fair point. You know, you can just use a mate's deodorant. Obviously, if you're going straight home, you can have your shower at home. You don't need new clothes and stuff. Then he said, he doesn't even take an overnight bag. And I was like, oh, well, you can't borrow your mate's toothbrush. That's disgusting. But he's actually got a very interesting method of storing his toothbrush. What he does is um, he can actually swallow his toothbrush, <laughs> right, and he regurgitates the toothbrush the following day when he needs to brush his teeth. That's incredible. Wow, isn't that it? is brilliant. Isn't that it? is absolutely amazing. I've is, seen him do it. Is it covered in bile? Nope. Clean as a whistle. Probably cleaner than I keep mine in my overnight bag. Wow. And does he just store toothbrushes? Is that his own... Only toothbrushes. Wow. Yeah. I saw him do it once, and, like, on the roof of his mouth, yeah, like the palate, if right, you will, sure, yeah. yeah. Before he went to bed, he put loads of toothpaste, and then in the morning, oh. when he went, ah, which is the noise he makes when he brings it back <laughs> nice. up, nice. it brushed against the toothpaste, so it came out of his mouth with toothpaste already on That's it. That's amazing. Did it, it brush is, his teeth along the way? It, it... It accidentally skimmed his teeth along the oh, way. Right. They were, certainly weren't clean to the standard where you'd, you know, you know, go and breathe in someone's nose. Right. Um, <laughs> because that's... Well, reasons for brushing your teeth. Number one, breathing on someone's <laughs> nose. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, um, if any of our listeners have a nose they want breathing on, message in. Thing is, if you breathed in someone's nose and you had bad breath, they'd be like, oh, what are you doing? Why are you breathing into my nose? But if you had good breath, they'd be like... Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the nice smell. <laughs> oh, we're having fun. I don't take an overnight bag. I just um, put, like, a spoonful of mouthwash into my cupped hand. <laughs> into your cupped hand? <laughs> yeah. That and then I just fun. hold my hand in the same position <laughs> overnight. And then in the morning, you know, pop it into my mouth. Where do you spit that mouthwash if you were to say, like, so, let's say, for example, you were, um... I can see the question that you're asking. Okay, well, And, um, it depends <laughs> how many nights I'm staying. If I'm staying for more than one night, <laughs> I'll spit it back into my open hand. That's an excellent idea. That's yeah. an excellent idea. <laughs> and why not? Uh, and, and why not? Indeed. <coughs> the lock-in. Yeah. <clears throat> do you think too many cooks would, in actual fact, spoil the broth? I think that um, too many cooks could take an advisory role and maybe not spoil the broth. Yeah. Yeah, because one of them could just say, I think that it should have some garlic. And then yeah. someone would say, oh, well, you know, why don't you just employ a head chef? Then you can have as many cooks as you like. Yeah, exactly. You know what else I think, like, it's difficult to spoil a broth because surely a broth is just traditionally like you throw in the leftovers, bit of stock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? That is very true. Good. Maybe they're just untrained cooks. Too many untrained Too cooks. Too many untrained cooks spoil the broth. Spoil the broth, yeah. Um, but then, why have you got so many cooks? What, what, <laughs> what, you know, what are you doing? Also, why don't you assign some of those cooks to cook something other than broth? Yeah. That's... What, what, you can't even have any bread with the broth, yeah. because all the cooks are crowded around this one broth exactly. pun. Exactly. Also, broth pun is the uh, technical <laughs> term for a pan. Broth is, is, if anything, just a starter, really, isn't it? So yeah, put, so that. put someone on the mains. Yeah. What are you doing? Get someone to do yeah. desserts. Where's the sous chef? Yeah. Where Ask, is he? Find someone who's cooking the broth and say, are you any good at doing souffle? And if he is, then stick him on desserts. Exactly. Do that. And if he's not, get yeah. him to make an omelette. Mm. And then you could wrap the broth in the omelette you know, another, like a straw. You know another phrase I have a problem with? It's uh, slow and steady wins the race. Doesn't. No. Doesn't at all. No. I've never won a race. Not when it's 100 metres. Nope. Nope. Then it's fast and... I'm neither slow nor steady. No. I literally, I go at it, my arm's flailing down That's that. very true. I still never win. No. But I'm neither slow nor steady. No. And I'm all over the place. And slow and steady doesn't win. He's terrible at running. Yeah. Oh, John slow and steady. <laughs> yeah. John slow and steady. What a guy. Rubbish at yeah. most things in life. Came in bronze, though. Did he come in bronze? Yeah. Oh, did. you mean he was made of bronze? <laughs> yeah, of ah, course. Ah, right. I mean, right. he came in bronze varieties. And I've it's... had a topic for a joke in just now, um, and it's my turn to do the joke. This is from uh, Georgie, so uh, fire away, Tom. Right. What do you want me to tell um, you joke the about? The topic of <laughs> joke is a lawnmower. All right. Why was the lawnmower so unpopular with the Mafia? Because he always grassed. Wow. Wow. What do you think of that? Nice. That was pretty I like quick, it. wasn't it? Fast. It, it was just fast. fast. It was insane. They're not good. They're fast. They're not good. Okay. They're fast. People will say that about me and you yeah. in any context. Yeah. <laughs> you know, really. Um, that was the problem with my boxing career. Yeah. Like, you weren't I, good. I wasn't good, but I could run away <laughs> oh, so my. quickly. But you used to do what wrestlers do and bounce off the ropes, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Like, you'd come flying at them with a, with a deeper, more meaningful punch. That's very uh, true. With all the speed of... 
sound, but uh, <laughs> no, no accuracy. That's very no, true. I want to saw you punch yourself in the stomach. Have you heard of that band, The Ace of Bass? I've heard of that band, The Ace of Bass. Yeah. Um, I could taste like the Ace of Bass oh, just yeah? on my tongue, yeah. Wow. You know, like you get vanilla extract. It yeah. was like that. It was just the Ace of Bass oh, wow. on my tongue. It was very nice. They should, and they do an Ace of Bass paste. Yeah, they do. So that's like chicken paste, but it's the Ace of Bass paste. Yeah. And what can you put that on? They do a fast paced Ace of Bass paste as wow. well. So a fast paced Ace of Bass paste. That's true. That is insane. Yeah. That sounds delicious. It's very good. It's double speed. It's four four rather than. Really? Yeah. That's very interesting. I bet that tastes excellent. It does. I bet it tastes excellent really quickly as well. <laughs> it does. Which I like. You know when you put food in your mouth? Yeah. And, like, it doesn't taste excellent immediately. Not good enough. This no. modern lifestyle, this, like, this world we're living in now, we need immediacy is key. Yeah. I really believe that. Although I have a problem with, um, this modern world. If I had one problem with this modern world... Yeah, what's it, that? It would be the modern world. Um, because I remember I was sitting at my computer the other day, and I was like, oh, I'm really thirsty. But I was like, oh, I could get up and get a drink of water. Yeah. But that will take me at least 20 seconds. Yeah. And I couldn't be bothered. Yeah. So I sat there thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's ridiculous. I've done the same. When you think about it, like, two million years ago, I would have trekked six miles for a glass of water or something like that. <laughs> glass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'd have trekked six miles for a bottle of Evian. Yeah. Now, there are other water brands available, of yeah, course. Yeah, there are. Um, Such as Morrison's own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now, I can't be bothered to get up and get myself a drink of water. I'd rather just sit there thirsty until I have a headache. And then I'll get up and get it. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing because that's something I can relate to. But yeah. then again, like, I never laugh at, like, my sister, and I can relate to her. <laughs> so that's weird, isn't it? That's very strange, the way that happens. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, it's difficult to know, really, what's yeah. going on in the world. The lock-in. Any experience with mythical creatures, message in. Message in. I want to hear about it. The first person to message in with a topic for a poem... I will write a poem spontaneously oh on my air. God. within three or four minutes of you sending me in that poem, um, that, that topic for a poem, I will have written the poem and I will read it out live on the air. Jokes, what we might poems, do is maybe... Titles, I anything. can do anything. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, if you do it, we'll play you a quick song, maybe for sort of like three minutes and 16 seconds, and that will be enough time for me to write you a poem on any subject. So that is the first person to message in. We'll right. receive a lovely poem. This and if it. you really like the poem, poem... We've got it right away. What have we got? What have we got? Have we got a message in? Oh, I don't know. I've just got a, I've just got a text myself. Oh, uh, here we go. Oh, I I've think this to... one's beaten. Oh, well, what have we got then? What All right, we got? we've got a poem about the Roman invasion of Britain, which I like the sound of very much. And I've much. also been texting... Oh, my phone's going insanely <laughs> quickly. But uh, I've got loads and loads of different topics. One of them is a dancing carrot. One of them is about deodorant. One of them is... Um, um, I don't know, let's see, uh, I'm not sure, something else, um, All right, well, but I will be doing this right now, so it'll I'll definitely be about the Roman invasion of Britain and a dancing carrot, and I'm gonna play you a quick song now, and by the time we come out of the song, I will be doing my poem. All right, well, that was three minutes and 16 seconds which people gave me to write a, sub uh, a poem on. Tom's also done one, so... Um, I thought in the interest of fairness, because we had so many subjects in, I thought right. I'd write a poem as well. But mine's not very good. Well, J mine's pretty good. Okay, so... Shall I go first to make yeah. those look rubbish? Well... My topics were the uh, Roman invasion and uh, dancing carrots. So, here we go. Want a subject for me to handle? It's the Romans light the candle. One day their leader's mind was made, thought of Britain to invade. He arrived at half past four on merry England's shore. As he stood there, idly glancing, he saw a carrot that was dancing. He thought that carrot was the king, but it was an inanimate thing. But the end's not nice. What can I say? He ate the carrot anyway. Oh, wow. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was my three minutes and That's 16 my one seconds man applause. poem. If you have any poem that you want to send in on any subject... Yeah, Please absolutely. do it. We'd love to read poem, it out. I could read it out. Tom could read it out. We could read it out together. Yeah. Uh, Tom, you wrote a poem. Would you I like to share that well. with our listeners? I've noticed that my poem is a lot more free form than yours, I okay. guess. So then it can't be judged on quality because, nope. you know, it's expression and it's art. And maybe I don't obey the rules. Maybe I don't always rhyme. But, but, but sometimes... I've written a very good poem about right. deodorant, okay? So deodorant here we go. was your topic. Yes, it okay, was. Okay, here we go. Topic deodorant. Deodorant. Do or don't orant. <laughs> <laughs> I smell, but do I smell good, like a deodorized man should? 
My smelly sprayed aerosol. De- deodorant. Deodor dye. Are- Gandalf be the coolest Lord of the Rings character, do you think? Um, no. Surely it would be Legolas, wouldn't it? No! Are you insane? Legolas no, is one of the worst... Oh, no, 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 I'm not having I that. I didn't realise we had this division. He's, Gandalf he's, is mm, infinitely no. cool. Yes, it's gotta he be, is. It's got to be Legolas. No way! You've seen Absolutely that, no Have you seen that all. bit where he swings up and he, like, swings onto the elephant? Yeah. That was cool! Yeah, it was cool. But it wasn't as cool as Gandalf... Like that bit in, like, like, right, right, case in point, that bit in Lord of the Rings where Gandalf just stands there and bees Gandalf. That's (laughs) insane. That's the coolest bit in the film. Like, Gandalf is infinitely, Gandalf comes back in another form. He's awesome. Well, all right, I would say that Gandalf the White does sound very, very cool. But, um, yeah, there are all those bits where they just be like, Legolas, use your elfin eyes. And that's just really cool. Yeah, that is kind of cool. But it's also like, Joey, you know, come on, come on, you, slave. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> do what you gotta do. John Reese davis can't be bothered. And, you know, I'm just the king of men. So, off you go, <laughs> Legolas, with your massive eyes. No, I think he's rubbish. I mean, no, no, comparably rubbish. He's a great character. He's awesome. Like, he's not a hobbit, is he? If he was a hobbit, he'd be a proper idiot. But, like... The thing I don't understand about Gandalf, what, what I think makes him a little bit less cool, is why did he need to fall off that bridge when he was Gandalf the Grey and become Gandalf the White? Like, why didn't he just destroy the bridge and then run away anyway? Well, he, if you remember, he destroys the bridge and then walks away thinking it was done. Oh, but then the whip comes does, and grabs him. Yeah, he doesn't jump off. Yeah. But then, right, who else do you know? In the world, right, any human being you know or whatever, any human being on this earth that you have seen fall off a cliff and before landing, kill a demon. Never seen it. Never seen it. <laughs> I would put it to you that it doesn't happen often. That's very true. That could be true. But, um, he, he gets his... He gets, like, completely beaten up, though, doesn't he, by that other old elderly man? Sa- Saruman. S- Saruman. Saruman, yeah. 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 yeah, he does. But that's because Saruman, you know, catches him unawares, <laughs> doesn't he? He catches him right off guard. You know one bit I don't like, because I don't like the name of the horse, Shadowfax. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Shadowfax, yeah. Why I, not? I don't think that's a cool name. I think it's trying too hard to be a cool name. I think that... You can't say that's, like, a bit you don't like. Like, <laughs> like the bit of the film I don't like is the bit where someone dies or whatever, but you just don't like the bit where the horse has a name that you don't like. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that makes me quite a nerd, doesn't it, as well? If someone's like... Yeah, absolutely. If someone's like, yeah, I don't really like Lord of the Rings, and then go, no, I don't like Lord of the Rings either, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. <laughs> the name of the horse. Ugh! The lock-in. Do you want me to tell you some facts? Lots of facts, please. I know, I know loads of facts. If anyone else knows any facts, please send them in. Yeah. Um, one fact. Um, did you know that as recently as a hundred years ago, right. every elephant on Earth had wings? <laughs> That's a fact, Tom. But then Dumbo used his ears to fly. Does those, was it those, like, primitive kind of wings? No, because or? that was made in, like, the 1930s. No, oh, that's so, true. So, like, you know, it was a hundred years ago, mm. pretty much. And Fair um, enough. Dumbo... Was one of the last flying elephants. Well, that's, that's true, isn't it? Actually, if I, you want to use the last actually, plural. No, I think I do remember that because I remember that 100 <laughs> years ago, elephants had wings but no bones. That's right. And that's yeah. how they could fly, isn't yeah. it? They were just sort of like sacks of grey yeah. blubber and wings. Yeah, and the wind used to push them off a cliff. Yeah. And they could soar for years. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> years and years and years. Le Tom. Yep. That's French. Oh, the right. French for Tom is Le Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Le Tom. Have you got any more facts? Yep. Loads. Do you know that your hair grows faster than your eyes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do know that. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a good fact, actually. Yeah, if you cut um, your hair, it grows back faster than your eyes. Is that right? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. That's why you have barber shops. Ah. But you don't see many opticians that do trims for your eyes. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> I never thought of that, really. Yeah. Um, did you know that the shell of a tortoise... Is actually like at any one point in in a life like a life cycle of torti, Latin plural for tortoise. Right. Um, like when a mummy turtle has a baby turtle. Right. Uh, she crawls out of her shell and gives it to the baby turtle. So obviously, like you ever see a, it, like for 
maybe 60 years, the baby turtle's not even big enough. It's just literally legging it round really fast in this <laughs> shell, right? Right. Like, honestly, turtles bit, turtles without shells are insanely quick. They can run, like, something in excess of 300 miles an hour. Oh, wow. But they can only do it, baby turtles, within their mother's shell. Because it's completely smooth inside, isn't it? Exactly. No friction. <laughs> legging it round, like, really fast. Oh, wow. But then when they grow big enough, they stick their head through and the little arms through. But then... They are restricted so much that their movement speed slows oh. down. And that is why all turtles are slow. But when they're inside their mother's shell, there is... What happens oh, what to the mean? mothers is another matter. Basically, when a mother turtle uh, gives up its shell to its um, baby, right. it just crawls out and becomes a lizard. Oh. <laughs> so that's where you get lizards from as well. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. Dan Witten said that he gave his dog a military rank, as well as a name. Oh, so that's wow. nice. So what? I'd love to. What? What? Wonder should, what that rank was. He should, I wish he'd included yeah, that in the message. Yeah. If you're still listening, Dan, would you please tell us what rank you gave to your dog, I, and also why? I'd make my cat a sergeant. He'd be Sergeant Whiskers. Sergeant Whiskers the third. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sergeant Whiskers. What's his second name though? Because you like to give pets a surname. No, Whiskers is his second name. Oh, so what's his first name? Frisky. Then? <laughs> Sergeant Frisky Whiskers. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, no that that makes sense actually. Yeah, Frisky. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. Sergeant Frisky yeah. Whiskers. I'm. A you, big you, you've fan. met Frisky Whiskers. <laughs> met him. I've kicked him down the stairs. <laughs> I need to also, also stipulate there are other kinds of dragons. There's ice dragons. That's true. Uh, fire dragons. Well, those are the standard dragons. Well, yeah, but there's more. What else is there? Yeah, acid um, dragons. Acid dragons. Um, I don't know. Golden dragons. Evil dragons. Yeah. Uh, black dragons. Dark dragons. Skeleton dragons. Ultimate dragons. Ghost dragons. Baby dragons. <laughs> Massive dragons. Dragon dragons. <laughs> I was going to say dragon dragons. Oh, well, you didn't say it, did you? Um... Army dragons. Yeah, I used to. I used to want to be an army dragon. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's loads. Um, there's uh, drag queen dragons. That's true. Um, there are female dragons. There are drag racing dragons. That's very true. There are dragon cars. Double winged dragons. Dragon wheels. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ultimate dragons. Have we said that? Probably said that. Yeah. Already. Um, um, laser dragons. Hairy dragons. Space dragons. Smooth dragons. Metal dragons. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, Jonathan dragons. <laughs> I'm going to stop this now, because we will just go on. Well, we've received a message. Uh, it's an interesting request, asking, can we make up a short song about a mouldy pear? Right. So, I'm up for that. I, I definitely think, think we what can. we'll do is, if we play you an existing song... Um, we can't promise it will be as good as the mouldy pear song. Be as, oh, we can't promise it'll be as good yeah. as our song. Uh, And you're about to hear a song entitled Moldy Pear, Moldy Pear by Ryan McCann and Tom Dransfield, an original composition. Yep, we made up the music, we made up the words, yep. everything, we made it all up. Alright, all right. here we go, I'm going to start then, am I? Okay, if you <clears> want to. <throat> <clears throat> I could do a musical introduction. Uh, oh, okay, well, okay, alright. Bum, bum, bum. Bum 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 Moldy pear, moldy pear, are you even really there? Is this situation fair? Moldy, moldy pear, moldy pear, moldy pear. I don't know if I should risk it. Moldy pear, moldy pear, I'd be much safer with the biscuit. Moldy pear, moldy pear, are you sitting on my chair? Moldy pear, moldy pear, is it true you used to be a bear? Moldy pear, moldy pear, now you're covered in the mold. Moldy pear, moldy pear, I left you and you got old. Moldy pear, moldy pear, should have wrapped moldy. you in cling film. Moldy pear, moldy pear, that would make a rubbish subject for a film. Moldy <laughs> pear, moldy pear, lots of different kind of fruit. Moldy pear, moldy pear. I don't know which I should choose. Moldy pear, <laughs> moldy pear, I've got lovely clothes to wear. Moldy pear, moldy pear, I like to go and scare. Now I'm in despair. Because of my pear. My pear once was fresh. And now it is mesh. <laughs> my pear. 
It's gotten old and brown. <laughs> and I can't help but frown. <laughs> I don't know what I should do. Maybe I'll give it to you. Uh. Moldy pie there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's the best we could do, uh, really. Um, I think it's the best anyone could do. I think it's the best. Full stop. So that's it. It's difficult to know where to go on a first date. Right. Because, for me, I mean, I actually, I have a girlfriend, so it's not really something I need to worry about, and um, we can't have our first date again. Oh. Um, but, like, it's difficult to know what I would say, like, because I think going to the cinema is not appropriate, because you don't know what, like, each of the tasting films is for a start. Yeah. So, like, you don't want to, you know, like, because I know that you like, like, I know that you like films like Shawshank Redemption or Green Mile, but only because you think they're funny. Right, yeah. So, like, if I went to the cinema with you, let's say we were on our first date, and mm. you said, let's go and watch Green Mile, and you're literally dying laughing, and I, just, I don't get it. I just love the look of Tom Hanks' face. Yeah. So, yeah. I like it when, um, that guy, uh, his mouse dies. Yeah, my favourite bits are the bits where, um, people die, though, really. <laughs> In any film. <laughs> These bits are so funny. You watched, uh, Independence Day barely, didn't you, because you laughed so hard. Yeah, that's true. There's so many dead that people. That bit where that city, like, explodes and stuff, that's brilliant, yeah. <laughs> what What would you say is the funniest thing about a film in which someone dies? Um, it's probably the bit when you sort of sense that the character's soul has left their body, because, like, they were never really a real person anyway. And so I'm not saying that that makes their death less of a tragedy, yeah. but I just mean that not only are they a fake person, so I'm already better than them, yeah. they're now also a dead fake person. Oh, yeah. So I'm, like, twice better. -er. That's true. That's, That's a good, good way of thinking about oh, it, Although, couldn't actually. you go on a first date to the cinema and then make jokes about the cinema, make jokes about the film or something? Jokes on a first date? All right, yeah. One that you could do is be like, if you, you know, obviously you want to hit the, you want to hit the ground running, you want to, you want her to know. Girls dig comedy, I think. I Girls so. like a funny guy. So the first thing you do, Buy a popcorn, sit down in the cinema, put one in your mouth, pretend to, d to pretend it's choking you. Right. So you literally, <laughs> want, you know, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> obviously tense your face. Yeah, so the hold blood, your breath. Yeah, 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 and you go purple. Right. And she's like, oh my God, this guy who I don't really know is going to die. And then go, huh, not really. She'll... That'd be good. She'll just Especially if you wait until they get to the hospital as well. Because <laughs> yeah. the hospital's a romantic place. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll have fooled all the doctors and stuff. They'll be on it, in on it. They'll yeah. laugh a lot. So and then that'll be brilliant. from there, who knows? Marriage? Yeah, sure. Anywhere from there. Mm. You'll certainly get past third base. I'd guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's got... I guarantee. I can guarantee that. Yeah. Um, I think a good one would be um, if you showed up on the first date, rung the door, and then they answer the door, and you go, "All right, I'm here to pick you up," and then you just <laughs> lift them up. That and then That'd drop be a her good on joke. her face. Yeah. So hopefully she'll like break <laughs> well, something. Well, I, I just meant for the pun. Well, yeah, but that's puns a, that's are always a... better when followed immediately by intense <laughs> that's violence. Very don't true. You think? It's, it's the lock-in. Lock no, it's true. And did you know that the Queen, every swan in the country, actually looks like the Queen? Oh, yeah. that's incredible. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah. I think you can argue with that, really. I think it is, too. You know. Uh, I know we've still got a couple of listeners. Um, I would like my lovely couple, please, uh, you know exactly who you are, um, John and Leah, to uh, message me in again. I really like hearing from you guys. Obviously, I want to. I did. I did. I do want to know how your essay is going on. You said you were struggling. You said you are having printer issues. All the other listeners want to know what happened. Don't you know? Don't be so selfish. <laughs> you know, sitting there. You know what I mean? People are sat home, just can't sleep because you're not telling them what happened with your printer. And you went all the way. To did you even get to Tesco or not? Or, or what happened? Because I, for one, will not go off there <laughs> until you damn well tell us what happened. <laughs> it's not on. No, I, I agree as well. I'm just as furious. Yeah, uh, you have a very interesting way of dealing with rage, That's true. don't you? What is it? Uh, I bottle it deep inside, yeah. so deep. Do you yeah. bury it deep down? Deep, deep down. Do you down. wrap it in a handkerchief and swallow it good? I, I take it down to about belly button level. Yeah. And then um, next time I see someone that I'm really furious with, if I'm already up to belly button level, yeah. then, you know, they get a belly button attack. Do you throw it in a Tupperware tub and gargle it down <laughs> with some Andrew's liver salts? <laughs> Almost always. <laughs> yeah, that's good advice. Yeah, sage it's advice. Good. Um, 
We do definitely still have some listeners. Some have issued a challenge. They say they'll be here until 9 a.m. 9 a.m. <laughs> is insane. 9 a.m. is an insane time. And if they are, then so will we. If that's what they say. And what else have they said? They said... My wife is pregnant. Would it be possible to abort just one of the babies? And B, she is pregnant with twins. Yes, okay, so I think that's what it means. Yep. Uh, right, I'll be honest. Abortion, not a great topic for comedy. You're probably right. Also, not something I know a lot about. But I'm going with it anyway. All right. You know, because yeah. we will respond. We will do. We will respond to requests. Yeah, we will do it. If, yeah. if nothing else... If if we die, one people will say one thing about us, it's that we respond to requests. Yeah, unless, the, well, it's, especially if the request was kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people would talk about that for hours. Afterwards. Well, he died doing what he loved. Killing responding himself. to requests. Yeah, no, killing himself. <laughs> killing himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can take a moral high ground when you're like, abortion's not a great topic for comedy. Killing yourself. <laughs> now there's a topic for comedy. I am always on the moral. Uh, you know what? I really want a brew. Really? Oh, brew. Brew? Brew. Brew? Brew? Brew. <laughs> brew. 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 I like brews. <sighs> the lock-in. The internet. Yeah, fire the Isn't internet. Isn't the internet amazing? It is pretty brilliant. The internet has changed the way I do everything. You know that? Oh, yeah? Yep. Well, has it changed the way that you toast bread? Yes. I now way? do that online. <laughs> So, oh, yes, it has. <laughs> I order my toast online. Do you really? Yeah, you know you can get those, um... Yeah, you know you can order food online with various supermarkets. Yeah, yeah, sure, um, like www.food.com. Yeah, exactly. Yum-yum-yum-yum-yum-yum-yum-yum.com. Yeah. Um, yeah, or yum, yum, food, yum. food Now. Yeah. Yeah, feedme.com, those ones are all good. Um, Very catchy. So, yeah, I order my toast directly. I haven't got time to toast bread. I no. Just, I just order the toast. <laughs> we just have to make sure you're in between nine and five <laughs> yeah. on the day they specify. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's much quicker. It's much more efficient. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Highlight well, of my week, uh, I cooked a lasagna the other week. Did you really? First time, yeah. You know, you told me that I can't give things a shot. I can't just, like, go for it with some things. Well, yeah. never cooked a lasagna before. I thought I'm going to go for it. Yeah, but that's something you can do that with. I mean, you couldn't... You don't have to train all your life to do well, lasagna. maybe so. Maybe I can run under miles. You know. <laughs> give it a go. I didn't know give if I could... Give it a shot. I, I give it, it a shot. I didn't know if I could cook a lasagna, and I could. I don't know if I can run 100 miles. Mm, I reckon I could. Well, when? All right, um, Thursday. Next, All right, next, next Thursday. Thursday. Uh, All right, next uh, Thursday. Next Thursday, when? Before, before this. Before this show. I'll start, what, 10 o'clock? Uh, at night? Yeah, p.m. Yeah, PM. yeah. PM, and then PM. I'll arrive in the studio, um, yeah, having run 100 miles, so. How about 11... 11- 35, you'll arrive. Something like that. 35 to 12. Yeah, give me some time before the studio. Yeah, you can, like, catch your breath, have a drink. Yeah. Have a quick shower. Sure. Have a quick bath after so the shower. So Then have another no, shower. No, I don't, I don't bath, so. No, you will do. No. I'm going to bath you. <laughs> don't ever reject the gift of a bath, Tom. Never. No. Never. It's, re- it's wrong. Although that's what I got last Christmas. And well, it's really a bath. Yeah. What did you do? Reject it? Yeah, I rejected it, because I was like, well, why didn't you get me any proper gifts? So I asked for a bike, and they just gave me the gift of a bath. Wait, hang on. Was it a physical bath, or did they bath you? No. Or, or offer to bath you? Yeah, it was the gift of a bath, so they gave me a bath. So they'd be like, you can have a bath, not, here is an actual bath, go and install it in your bathroom. Yeah, well, they forced a bath upon me. <laughs> that was... So, they threw you into the bath. <laughs> yeah. Was it hot? Um, you know, it was tepid. <laughs> so they threw you into a lukewarm bath. Yeah. For Christmas. Christmas morning, I woke up, <laughs> bleary-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I rubbed my eyes, thought I'd see what Santa had got me. Yeah. All of a sudden, burst in through my door, my family. <laughs> Get in the bath. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Grabbed me under the arms, threw me into the bath. <laughs> did you graze your knee on the way into the bath? I did. I did a lot, wow. yeah. Then they started vigorously... <laughs> scrubbing you. Yeah, bathing me. <laughs> did they have time to take your pyjamas off you? <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> those are filthy as well. So, so that's that probably was, the best for the best. That was Christmas for you. Yeah. Wow. It's nice. What was insane. your Christmas like? This year, yeah, I slept for it. Oh right, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I woke up. Well, I went to bed on the twenty fourth Christmas Eve and right. woke up in two thousand and eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I tend to hibernate. <laughs> yeah. That's like six days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I tend to do that. Nice. Yeah, fair enough. I uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened over Christmas. Apparently, Christmas dinner was good. Don't know. That's probably an episode of Doctor Who. Well, my mum, bless her, my mum's absolutely lovely. 
And she felt bad leaving me out on Christmas dinner, so what right. she did was plate me up a portion and leave it on my pillow next to oh. me. But obviously, yeah. during the six-day slumber, I rolled into it. Yeah. Um, I Ta- did eat it. Tasty though, sleep. yeah. I yeah. don't know. I ate it in my sleep. What did you imagine it was in your sleep? Sunday dinner. Oh, right. But it was Christmas day. Yeah, so that's slightly different, isn't it? No. Yeah. You usually have, like, chicken, but... You know, you didn't notice it was turkey. Yeah, which you and, and also you got those little sausages wrapped in bacon. Yeah, and you get Brussels sprouts as well. I didn't eat the sprouts. You didn't apparently. Miss those. Oh no. right, you left those. Yeah, I, wo- I actually woke up, and when I did, it was really difficult to open my eyes because I had a sprout perfectly balanced on each eyelid, and I was trying to sort of like lift up with the strength to open my eyes, and I couldn't do it. Oh wow! Couldn't do what it. do you know? <laughs> the- what do you know? Uh, do you want to know everything that I know? Yeah, what do you know? Alright, um, I know that it's wise to put basil in tomato dishes. Oh yeah. Yeah, improves the flavour. Right. No end. What else do you know? Um, alright, I know that if you leave milk out of the fridge, <laughs> it'll go off quicker than it will if you leave it in the fridge. Is it all food-based knowledge? No. What else do you know? Milk's a drink. What else? What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, no, it's a food stuff. What you... No, it's a drink. No, it isn't. Well, yeah, it's a food stuff, technically, but... Yeah. All right, you want to know what else I know? Yeah, what else? All right, then. Um, red wine stains... It, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Coming, <laughs> all right, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. You want some more knowledge? <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. I've got one for you. All right. You want to know what I'm it ready. is? I'm ready, yeah, I'm waiting. You want to know what it is? Yeah, desperately. Right. Foxes are not actually ginger. Right. Foxes are blue. Oh, nice. And we just think they're ginger because of Basil Brush. <laughs> in reality, blue foxes that you see in the wild yeah. are blue. Oh, wow. And actually, what you see running around and you think it's a fox no is way. a massive squirrel. <laughs> right. So real foxes are blue. They're something. How many real foxes are there? Six. And can they fly? No, they can't. Ah. Oh. But can they jump really high? Yes. Oh, yes, right, they can. of course. Which is why it looks like they can fly. Oh, right, that makes sense. What do you know, Tom? What do I know? Yep. I know that the heart can beat um, two bongo drums, up to two bongo drums at one time. Wow. Yeah. What else do you know? What else do I know? Yep. I know that um, a full rotation for a man is actually 365 degrees, but it's 364 degrees for a woman. Really? To do a full rotation, yeah. <laughs> that is Isn't insane. that odd? That is very interesting. Isn't it weird that it works like that? Do you know anything else? Um, magnetic North... Uh, it doesn't get along with real North, because real North's a bit pretentious. Right. <laughs> what a stunning fact. Yeah. Do you know one more thing for me? Do I know one more thing? Yep. One more thing, um, please. Sound waves actually travel... They travel better through water than they do through air, but then they travel better through jam than they do through water. Wow. So, so listeners, put your radio or laptop in some jam, <laughs> yeah. and the sound of our voices will be improved tenfold. Were you to host a party and you could choose anyone you like, including fictional or historical figures, who would be invited? First thing I want to address there, I like, were you to host a party? <laughs> like, you know, like, you have, to, you have to host this party. I think that's an absolutely excellent, like, you know, on the off chance that one day you host a party, are you going to invite anyone fictional or dead? It's not like, were you to host a party in which fictional characters could come. It was like, were you to host a party? And you could choose. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So, if the fates aligned that you could do both of these things... <laughs> yeah. ...are the second part, which... Who would you bring? Who would I bring? Hmm. Um, I would bring... Or who would you invite? There's no guarantee they're gonna come. Well, yeah, that's true. All right, who would I have to bring? All right, fictional and historical. You've got to bring, what, Abraham Lincoln, I'd say? Really? Yeah. Why, what's he gonna add to the party? He's massive, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's just really tall. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. All right. What so else? easy, good. Um, who else am I bringing? Um, maybe the original Buddha. Well, not the original Buddha. Um, one of the other Buddhas. So Buddha? Yeah. At some one point. Buddha. The, you know, yeah. I can't quite remember his name, mm. um, but he's the really fat one. Yeah. So I'd invite the very large, yeah, overweight Buddha, because yeah. then, you know, I'd have Abraham Lincoln, you know, legs, I'd call him, stretch. Yeah. And then I've got, you know... Buddha with yeah, me as who well. Who else would you invite? Anyone else? Who else would I invite? Historical figures. Um, I think I like this. You're going for sort of like a history theme of your party. I've got an idea for mine. So, yeah, that's you true. Know, who, who else would you invite? Right, okay. Uh, well, if I'm going for a history theme, I might as well spark it up with a fictional theme. I'd invite Spider-Man. Okay. 
Yeah, in case things got out of hand. Yeah. Obviously, he, he Abe Lincoln, tricks. he was quite, you know, strong in his views. Yeah. But I might not agree. Abe right, Lincoln, uh, Spider-Man enough. can calm things down to get here. That's true. Also, I reckon that Spider-Man can break dance. Yeah, he'd be good fun at party. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. never I've never seen him break dance, but, um, you know, with his agility, I reckon he could. Yeah, he probably could. Mm. You know who I'd invite? I'd only invite one person. Right. I'd invite Alan Titchmas, right? Right. And I wouldn't tell him that he was the only person <laughs> who got invited, right? Yeah. And then I'd be ah, come in, come in, they're you all do, in the back. You do realise that you've crucially misunderstood the basis, basis of nope. the question. Then I'd invite him in, come and sit down on my couch, Alan, and then I'd sit on a chair opposite him and just not say anything to him. But I'd look at him. Right. But you do understand that Alan Titchmarsh is a real man. Yeah. But he's not a historical or fictional figure. Yeah, but this is what I do. It's my party. I'll invite <laughs> who I want. Right. right so it's, if you were to host party and you could invite historical <laughs> or fictional figures, yeah, but also you, you wouldn't. You'd invite yeah. a regular man, and it would be Alan Titchmarsh. Yeah, because then he'd be sat and he'd feel really awkward. Yeah. Because he doesn't know me anyway. Like I've never met the guy. Yeah. So he's on a whim turned up to this party, <laughs> right? And there I am, sat opposite him, not saying a word. He'd probably come as well because it's a universe in which fictional and historical characters can come to your party. Yeah. So they'd be like, oh, maybe I will get to eat meat. <laughs> maybe I get to meet Abraham or Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. yeah. Legs, but no, no. It'll be me sat opposite him w- with a little pot of soil. Yeah. That would be brilliant. <laughs> Make him feel a little bit comfortable. <laughs> and that's what I would do. Do you think he would feel comfortable? If he is feeling awkward, you just put, like, plant pots around him and stuff. Yeah. He can't touch them, but he'll feel no. more... No, if he touches them, I'll shoot him in the face. <laughs> yeah. He'll feel if more... If you're listening, own. Alan, um, he... watch out, because I'll shoot you in the face yeah. without thinking. you definitely will. I'll, uh, I don't tell it again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he probably won't come, because last time he came to my house, I shot him in the face. <laughs> yeah. To be fair. That's very true. He's probably not going to be interested in that <laughs> at all, is he? No. I can't so, imagine um, that he could. No. That'd be bad, wouldn't it? Yeah. What's your hot button topic? Do you, no. have, a, do you have a very hot button? What do you mean by that? I no. mean, I do have a hot button. Yeah. yeah. I keep it in the oven. Oh, right. Yeah. And every time I get cold finger, I push it. Wow. That was it. Our first ever podcast. That was the whole show. I loved it. We had to condense it down. I know. We didn't even get to say radio goodbye. I know. We condensed it so much that we missed goodbye. But then, I suppose in some ways, this is goodbye. We won't say goodbye to the listeners. They'll be here next time. I hope so, Tom, because I don't ever want to say goodbye. They can come here on Thursday at midnight. On Bailwig FM? You can find it online, Ryan. They should Google it. Oh, Ryan, I just don't want to say goodbye. Oh, Tom, I think we have to. Goodbye, Ryan. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye, Goodbye, listeners. listeners.